Thank you, John Brewer. <laughs> I think I have to freeze for your art. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so you all know how to do a speed skater squad, but what I want to do, let me just revisit one aspect of it, which may not have been completely clear the other day. If you're in a position something like this, remember, and then you lower yourself, remember I mentioned, just watch, you move your body weight backwards. See that mm -hmm. movement? Backwards onto the heel? That takes the strain out of the knee. You only have to move the body weight back an inch or so to do this. But if you're feeling it in the knee, it's almost guaranteed that you're a quad dominant person. So you move the weight back and all of a sudden these muscles have to take on the job and that's what activates the glute. Did you have a comment? You can also use the dowels to, use to get this one. Remember how we did that the other day? If you wish. Or if your balance is not so hot and Olivia pointed this out so beautifully the last time we were playing with these things, by all means, when you're sticking your bottom out, use use your fingertips for a guide. Just don't support your weight on your fingertips. And then once you get into position, drop the weight down. As try to get the opposite knee as close to the floor as you can. I noticed that you when you were doing these the other day, your knees are only this far off the floor. That's what you want. So that's enough theory. Just try one on each leg, say for ten seconds or so. So the cueing once again, I'll start off with my strong leg because it's easier to talk. <coughs> like this. Actually I'll do this version. Like this, like this, like this, then watch, just like a, a Bulgarian deadlift, tilt the body forward until it's parallel to the floor, and then sink down. Move the body's weight backwards if you're feeling the knee. And to change over, like this. And come up. Body parallel to the floor, please. <coughs> it is. Your chest will rest on your leg a little. Stick your ass out. The glutes are working phenomenally. And also, too, just look at Roger's forms. Lovely. See how the knee has come across to the centre of the body? You do need to have the knee close to the centre of the body to get balance. And stick the bottom out. Let me just show you. That is perfect form. Look at the depth. All glutes. Beautiful. Oh, also, there's another variation on this too, Marion. Could you just do that again? Yep. I believe. Just watch this, everyone. Like this, like this, parallel to the floor. And then she's going to go up and down. One, and now up, and down. And notice how she doesn't fully straighten the leg because after the leg goes past 90 degrees there's no effort being made there anyway much and just go up and down it's another variation on this immensely effective thank you so please try that everyone and the arm position and the stick position is identical to what we're doing in the handstand drill no difference whatsoever Get the body parallel to the floor first before you seek depth. Drop your chest down. Good Gregory, stick your ass out, brother. Your flex on the spine. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> stick your ass out. Yeah. Yes. So lift the chest up a tiny fraction. There you go. Feel that? Lo and are lovely. Just drop your chest and shoulders down a fraction more. Parallel to the floor. That's perfect. Now, Ben, feel that in the glutes? Yes, very much. Excellent, that's what you want. The good this is a value for money course. If you don't feel it in the glutes, Can you, you get the money back. Spot, and the reason for exploring this exercise again now is simply to remind the brain where the glutes are. So don't tie yourself out. If you can feel your glutes, that's all you need to do. <laughs> now, the next progression, where we're going to get into the Cossack squat, which is my personal favourite of the single leg um, exercises. Very nice, Stephen. Just drop your chest down a fraction further. Just watch this. In the beginning, when you try to do a Cossack squat, most people are not actually going to be loose enough in the groin to get down. And so this is what I recommend you do. Come across to something where you can actually hold on to something like this. And this is critical. And please don't uh, violate this principle just to get down. 
if you look at my feet, see how the arch in the foot is properly formed? And the foot is making a 90 degree line with the other leg. What you'll find yourself wanting to do is to turn the foot out like this and you'll want to come in on the inside of the ankle because that makes your ankle artificially more flexible. But what you actually want is this, like this, and move towards this leg. This is a mobility exercise for this uh, movement. Then move the body forward like this. And then watch, turn the foot so it's forming 90 degrees. Put this leg out and go down to here like this. Move towards this leg. Move forward. Press this knee out of it. Look at the arch. Perfectly formed. So that's the warm up movement. So just do that a couple of times on each side. Where you're trying to have your body weight, trying to have your body weight on the inside of this right angle. Is that clear? You can also bend towards this leg, hold, pull, go towards this leg and then down. Another leg. Like this, like this, like this, like this like this, this angle. Work your body weight forward in this angle here. Try that please. Hang on to something and get the form right. Make sure your heel stays on the ground and the heel is directly underneath the glute that's going down towards it. Greg, 90 degrees with this foot. Turn the foot so it's facing like this. Oh, that's what you want. Hips out. No, don't. That's the point, and so you're rolling over on your ankle on this foot, and that's the reason this ankle remains. That's the correct shape, and let your weight settle into your heel, like that. That's perfect. I, I turn the feet out just for the abduction. Folks, the reason why your body wants to turn your feet out is because you don't have enough ankle flexibility. This exercise done properly will improve your ankle flexibility. What's that? Your body will try to flatten its arch if you don't have enough ankle flexibility. So here's another cue. If you find that the arch in the feet, the foot that you're bending down to is flattening, put weight on the outside of the front of the foot. And also don't go all the way down. You have to be able to control the alignment of the ankle. It is critical. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. You can feel a massive uh, Well, when you get right down there, as you're doing hamstring. Just listen to this bit, folks. The thing that you're stretching in here if you have one foot. is the inner hamstring and the other is a muscle called gracilis. Now Lester's doing another variation, he's a bit more flexible than I am in this position, just do the same thing. That is perfect, just watch this. He's holding on to his ankles and keeping his body parallel to the floor. Beautiful. Now try and sink down a bit lower and you can lift the ball of the foot off the ground if you want. There you go, like that. Feel that? And that also exposes gracilis. This is, the, this is the muscle I'm talking about. That one right there. Only gracilis and the inner hamstring crosses the inside of the knee joint. And it's one small pair of muscles that stops you doing the movement. But this, as a mobility exercise and a strengthening exercise, will absolutely get this flexibility happening. OK, everyone sort of has rehearsed the basic movement. Now I'll show you how to use a kettlebell. I always considered until recently the use of a, a kettlebell or a weight as just a means of counterbalancing. Just look at Greg and my body. He's taller than I am, but my legs are longer than his and my trunk is shorter. Can you all see? Yeah. And as a result, my trunk is not, because it's not as long as his, counterbalancing this exercise is way more difficult for me. Not just a flexibility thing. And so, if we grab just something small like this and hold it out at arm's length. Firstly, notice the body's almost upright. And secondly, full depth in the position.
That's your next exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Don't grab a heavy pedal bell, just grab a light one or a light dumbbell. Perfect. Now look at the depth and look at the body upright posture. Now sink right down. Yes. Perfect. I want to explain something else. The reason I recommend using a counterbalance is it loads up the entire posterior chain that we're interested in using in, in this next exercise. That's perfect. Look at the alignment. Not so far. Great, we keep going. Right, slow, yeah. Angela, you've turned your foot out to the side slightly. Greg's doing it correctly. That foot has to point straight ahead. That's perfect. Now sink down. Yes. Perfect. And listen to this next cue. Stephen, look at your feet position. Listen to this next cue. Do not think about lifting up out of bottom position. Think about pressing the heel away from you. That activates the blue. Now press the heel down. Left to feel there? Straight away. Turn the foot in. Lovely. Also, see this is a martial arts variation. This is the perfect legitimate way of doing this pose. Or you can turn the foot up and expose the back of the leg to the stretch. Beautiful. Do the hips yeah. Yeah. You can come, listen, there's lots of different ways of doing this exercise. And actually, just look at what Graham and Katie are doing in the back. This is how we do it in exercise class when we're doing a circuit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, that didn't look quite so good. Great, thank you. <laughs> oh, come on. He asked us to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go to the same side. And you lean, what's this? I'm leaning back against Greg. Up. Lean back. And deep. Pull yourself forward. It stretches the groin. And up. Like that. Beautiful. And this is a practice weight. I'm working on the 28 kilogram kettlebell at the moment. And some of the guys next door have done quite a bit more than that. But it activates all the muscles through the posterior chain that you're going to need for a single leg squat. But there's, a, there's two advantages of the Cossack squat, in my view, of the single leg squat. One is it's an incredible mobilization exercise and will absolutely unlock gracilis in the inner hamstring. And the second is you can load it up and get some real strength in the leg that you're lifting up out of the bottom position from. So when you're training this for strength, I recommend starting on your weak side and doing your five or six repetitions up and down, taking a break, come back and then do the second side and only do as many reps for the second side as you can do. <coughs> so have a play with that a little bit.